was hit, and um, all the power just flickered. And then we have a water station next door that's connected to a, the power grid in a certain way, so we always have equal pressure. And I heard everything just hit it, and it just filtered through. And I mean, it was it was powerful. And I knew it was prophetic because it wasn't just yeah, you could feel it. Surge. It was a power surge. Yeah, strong power surge. Yeah. When it happened, it's every outlet element, every appliance, everything connected. Feels the surge. And you recognize this prophetically. So I, I agree with you. you know, not everything happens as prophetic. There's a couple things happening. <laughs> <laughs> and you felt the surge of that. Yes. Am I feeling that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel any momentum? Yes. This, this is what we feed. God creates and we feed. And we're in that moment. The nature of this particular enemy requires a very specific method of resistance and attack. And as I was sharing with you before, the life and the strong, in every approach from the top, the sides, from the rear, but his strength is also his weakness. You know, as you know, the Dominican Indians who lived here harvested the alligators by cutting down the pine tree, they removed the branches, sharpened one end of this long pole, and then several of the men would grab hold of it and he'd go inside. They'd run toward the alligator waiting for him to respond with his strength, with his mouth. And then they'd run this pole through his mouth into his innards and, and they would harvest the gator yeah. in this way. See, his strength was also his weakness. Yeah. And he just began to roar, he began to open his mouth, he began to, to you know, intimidation has continued. We feel it every time we've come in here. I thought we'd be here three months now. Eight months, nine months. Pretty soon it'll be a year. That's true. And uh, <clears throat> so today's the day. Amen. 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 And I have several other things to share with you that I won't share because uh, these gentlemen that are with us today are guests. We're going to have to go to the airport. So I'm going to move quickly into something else here in a moment. But something about to happen. Amen. 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 It's great to have David and Kelly and, and their beautiful daughter with us today. Mm -hmm. I do to Kentucky. Mm. Good things do come out of Kentucky. I'm yeah. <laughs> Another guest up here, and I uh, welcome you. Uh, but <clears throat> we are going to charge forward here in a moment um, in a very important way. Without the supervision of this little system, then uh, the confusion that's been upon God's people comes upon the enemy. Because the systematic illusion, when the system fails, the illusion begins to fall apart. Yeah. And his oversight, provision, and strategy for producing his own purposes begins to fail him. And then we are going to see a new apostolic order begin to form in, in Florida. Yeah. And, and I believe that this has national ramifications simply because the Huguenots were blown into the mouth of this river. And so if you, you know, if you open your maps and if you look at the St. John's, this river that's right in front of you here, the reason why we're at the pinch point, look at Calford, which is where this city was founded, uh, you'll see that it opens up to the north into the image. You can see the dragon in the river. And you see the eye of the dragon, which looks directly after the river shifted uh, in <clears throat> but several uh, years ago, hundreds of years ago, actually, after the Huguenots. But the the eye of the dragon is looking at, and the mouth of the dragon is pointing toward and protecting the point, the place where the gospel was first preached, first danced. The few those were dancers, they prophesied in the streets, they danced in the streets. First gospel was preached, first converts to Christianity were made. The Spanish came and slaughtered them. And so, Apostle Clay said, you know, I hear the voice. Now, several years ago, when we began this battle, God gave me this word that, that blood has a voice. Yeah. And the voice of these martyrs would cry out, not only for justice, ladies and gentlemen, because justice always leads to purpose. That's right. Wow. God had a purpose in blowing them into the mouth of this river. God had a purpose for this land where you and I live. <coughs> you and I are marked as a remnant people to find, discover that purpose, to reset it in place, and begin to function in that purpose. So we who inherit this purpose can bring it to fullness and greater fulfillment in our generation and pass that on to inheritors of the Spirit who can bring it to even greater fulfillment and purpose 
uh, full of, uh, of purpose in their generation. Amen. Amen. That's what we're about. That's what we've been talking about. We've, we've, we've spent years talking about we've, we've invested in you. It's in your belly. Whether you realize it or not, you're pregnant with that purpose. Yeah. Amen. 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 There's some fundamental things going to happen today. Amen. I don't want to talk like this. I'm usually really quiet me, but today I'm really <laughs> with, with a little intensity. <laughs> But I have a responsibility to set you up for this moment. I don't want you to listen. Amen. I want you to understand the ramifications of what God's doing. You see, because Leviathan both sees and provides himself a systematic illusion, we're about to cut off his supply lines. Amen. The one of the things about a kingdom center is you're a home base. And God said to me, you know, you have to build something in the home base. And that you'll be able to reach out as far as the strength of the home base. Amen. Uh, don't, um, and God said to me, do not outrun your supply line. Amen. Yeah. And some people feel that always, people always think they're ready for it, right? What happens <laughs> is their readiness will position them beyond their supply line. Mm -hmm. right? You can never move any further away from your home base than the strength of the home base can supply. That's right. Amen. Amen. So it's the strength of our intercession and worship that blends together until we can't tell the difference between them. It's the, it's the level of maturity and our ability to function properly uh, and function by that I mean in kingdom culture. It's our ability to do that as a, as a home base that causes us to reach into Brazil, Costa Rica, Puerto Rico, Zimbabwe, causes us to reach into Europe. It's, you know, we can only go as far as the strength of the home base. If you can't do it here, you can't right. do it there. That's right. Yeah. How many know I ran into Jezebel when I went to Rio de Janeiro? How many know I ran into Python when I went to Jezebel? How many know that Leviathan functions on every continent and every yeah. system? He comes out of the sea of humanity in order to position himself in systematic delusion. And God wants the United States of America to be a fathering nation with victory over Leviathan so that we can, through a kingdom culture, influence the culture of Europe and English, you know, and the, and the nations of Africa and the nations yeah. of Asia. He wants us to have that kind of positioning. Amen. That's who we are. Say amen. 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 So uh, I, I felt so strong. A few uh, years ago, God gave me a, a vision of my soul. I saw in 1955, four T-bird driving on a highway, two-lane highway, and it was backed up behind uh, semis as far as I could see. Couldn't go. I was born in 55. It was a very <laughs> but he couldn't pass, kept trying to pass, kept trying to pass. And then the Lord spoke to me and in the dream, and he said, Ford passing. Now that was a long time ago because it was just before, it was before Gerald Ford died. He said that when Gerald Ford passes, he was, he was, he was playing on words, he's not so good at doing in prophetic things. He said, when Ford passes, he's going to be able to to move into the other lane and pass all this obstruction. And he said, what I have released in the 50s, I'll re-release again in this generation. All right. Now, <clears throat> we've seen the beginnings of that. It's, I think it's like a baby trying to get, you know, trying to grow up still. It's still something that's not in some ways. I mean, it's not the fullness that we'd like to have. Yeah. Being rather impatient versus <laughs> life for everything to happen tomorrow. <laughs> Impossible to see things as finished. I had done, you know. <laughs> well, that, that kind of passion is what <clears throat> it keeps us accurately anticipating, I guess. So I haven't seen, we haven't seen the fullness of it, but we've certainly seen it. Mm -hmm. And then the boss of Clay said that he had a dream last night, and, uh, and I don't know what else is going to happen. I'm, I'm not saying anything to the Dutch who's here with us about what to do, because he's, uh, he's a big boy and he can handle that. <laughs> and I don't think he's going to completely obey God. But I did have this that I needed to share as leader here. And then when he spoke to me, I understood. We got, we got a big piece of the puzzle. And we're just kind of turned over to play to share what he has to share and then see how these guys want to proceed. And um, I just want you to know you're in a place where people understand your language Amen. and have been prepared to respond. I didn't make a big deal about Dutch being here in this room. For two reasons, didn't have a lot of space, but mostly because one thing I do is very, don't be a very strategic meeting. But I'm happy for everyone's here. I'm not, I'm not, you are now 
outsider. Uh, this, you're in a safe place, and God's going to do something amazing here. Amen. Amen. This is Paul's awesome play, Nash. The conference was just excellent. Not in any way in arrogance, but I told Dutch that day, I think we do one of the better jobs of modeling, commissioning, and prophetic presbytery. Of any that I, I've been a part of many of them. One of the things because of the prophetic in my life, I used to do probably at least six college graduating classes a year that we did prophetic presbytery for every graduating student. So I really liked that, and I saw a lot of hope came to people. Had an interesting dream. I dreamed that I was watching Fox News, and it was announced on Fox News that the brand new aircraft carrier Gerald R. R. Ford had came up the St. John River and become lodged right here at the Nara place. Wow. <laughs> and on the news, the, the reporters, that they always are, they're asking questions. Well, why did it go up the river? Yeah. <laughs> and on the news, Fox News, it said Dr. Don Lynch had requested it. <laughs> <laughs> But then when I pondered this this morning, and let me just say this, in my pattern with God, when I remember a dream when I wake up, it speaks of importance. Amen. My normal pattern is about 3 o'clock every day, I remember my dream life. I just, but if, there, if it's something of importance, I remember when I wake up. That just, why does God do it that way, I don't know, but that's the pattern in my life. Mm -hmm. But as we got here this morning, I just, I looked across there and I knew the dream was significant. And the very significance came as I felt the impression of God and I looked up the name Gerald to see what it means. I, if Don had ever shared what he did about the alligators around me, I don't remember. It's very well possible that we run together a lot, but I didn't remember that. But when I looked at the name Gerald, it, this is what it means. Ruling spear. Wow. wow. And even the name Ford, which is used about 50 times in the Word of God, because that was, if, if my understanding from a little bit of study that I've done previous to the day, that this narrow place was where they crossed the cattle and they crossed, I, I remember reading one article where they crossed the cattle there, they, they used it to cross. And so, I want to tie this into one other thing that I believe is prophetic. You know, just in my gifting, uh, I listen to sound in words. There's a kingdom sound in words. There was a kingdom sound I heard yesterday, a prophetic word that I prophesied. And I went to bed meditating on it last night. But when the Lord said that, yes, Florida was a forerunner state, Amen. but he was about to call the vanguard out of the forerunner state and send them to the front line. That word vanguard had a sound in it. Mm. And I suddenly saw something that I'm still processing, and Dutch uses this a lot, I use it a lot, but we talk about the remnant from the remnant. But what I believe I saw yesterday that ties into this, I saw that what we're calling the remnant from the remnant is the remnant from the remnant, but they're really the vanguard. They're the one that are willing to go to the front line. And so I want to read a, one scripture and I want to turn it over because I, I believe with all my heart, uh, I know with all my heart, and let me help you with that. If I say I believe something, I'm coming to faith. There's a journey from when faith comes to you to you become faith. When you come to faith, you become one with the truth yes. that has come to you and brought faith. Amen. And so I know that Florida has been, in the southeast part of this nation, has been very significantly uh, positioned and is now being postured to move out and lead the nation. But I'm going to read to you from the Message Bible, because I believe this is the vanguard, okay? And I believe this is the new model. How, how many of you realize there's a new, 
I, I know I've been using that, but there's a new model of prayer coming on. I, I believe, you know, I'm not putting death on the block, but I believe he's carrying some revelation that he hasn't even processed through yet that's going to come out about the prayer that's going to put what has been prayer in this nation on steroids. Okay? But here's, here's what I believe the vanguard that God is going to be able to send to the front line uh, is, is described here. Uh, let me make sure I'm in the right place here, Sam. In Malachi chapter 3, verse 16, don't turn there, but I'm reading from the Message Bible. Then those whose lives honored God got together and talked it over. And God saw what they were doing and listened to him. And a book was opened in God's presence. And minutes were taken of a meeting with the name of the God-fearers written down, all the names of those who honored God's name. I just looked it up. Google never Googled it before. The Navy recruits 40,000 people a year. I thought that figure was staggering. Of that, 50% want to become Navy SEALs. But only 6% of those who even try to become Navy SEAL, that, 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 and you cannot have any slight degree of colored blindness to become a Navy SEAL. I know a few Navy SEALs. I'm going to be with one in just a few weeks because he's helping me uh, improve my shooting. I'm going to go spend a week, uh, actually three days, with this guy. He's a Navy SEAL, and he's going to help me. I, I'm going to pull him out there. That just, you know, it's, not something I have to do, it's something I want to do. But they can have the, the physical, the mental. Do you think the physical is hard? You ought to read some of the mental things they go through. But here's the point I want to make. Only 6% of those that start out to become Navy SEAL. Now I'm talking about that apply. I'm talking about that start in the program, only 6%. And God is going to, he is raising up in the kingdom centers, apostolic centers, uh, whether it be David there in Paducah or Don here or what we're trying to do across the uh, Mississippi River Basin, he's looking for that, that 6%, okay? Now let me finish this. In verse 17 it said, God of the angel, isn't it interesting? He talks about how he comes to this meeting and then next he speaks about the angel mm -hmm. Let me just tell you, if God comes, if, if we start having meetings where God comes and listens in and takes minutes of our meeting, the angel army is going to be with us. Amen. 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 And I'm shifting everything in me because I, I have to tell you, I'm tired of meetings. Yeah. 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 Amen. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> now, now, that won't take away from assembly. See, there are times we assemble as a I, I, help me, Dutch, if I pronounce it. The curriculum, is that the, 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 is that a good pronunciation of it? They didn't teach me phonics in school, so I started. <laughs> <laughs> I did a redneck. Do what? Close enough for redneck phonics. Okay. Well, I, feel, I feel great then. I feel right at home. I feel love. <laughs> When the Kirkon assembles, it, 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 it's Hebrews 10.25. It's in the word to start love and good work. But I don't tell you, you can't take a nation with just love and good work. That's right. That's right. Can I say that again? Yeah, please do. You can't take a nation. And all this stuff out there, the other day, something, I think Don posted something, and somebody said something, and I said, yeah, you know, it's a, every, every, the answer to everything is love. And I said, yeah, Jesus, who was the perfect picture of love at all times went in and turned tables over and ran them out with a whip. Yeah. Yeah. So are you trying to tell me he wasn't operating in love at that time? You know, you ever had your parent tell you this is going to hurt me more than it does you? Yeah. I thought my dad was a liar until my children came up. <laughs> and I realized it. But I want to finish with this. The God <coughs> of angel army said they're mine. All of I don't know what you can declare tonight, but I can do it. I'm so bad. Yeah. Right. I can get all in the line. Yeah. I don't know how many times that Susan and I would save up a small retirement 
and then feel in our heart that it was better to invest in the kingdom. And let me just tell you, we don't have to retire. I'm not saying it's wrong to have one. But let me tell you what I believe. And I, I don't have any spiritual son or daughter. I'm going to use this couple. But I'm going to make a mark, not a point, with spiritual sons and daughters because they are born my retirement. Amen. 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 I just heard a story happened here in Florida of a spiritual son who his spiritual father helped him buy a piece of land to build a church on in Nashville. And he bought more land than he needed and he sold up part of the land the other day and he came to his spiritual father's 49th anniversary of ministry and brought him a half a million dollar check. Hallelujah. I'm not telling you expect land. I know that I've been a part of this group. I've been invited to sit at the table. What I'm trying to tell you is this. The God of the angel army is looking for those that he can say, they're mine, all mine. Now let's go back to what it said. Whose lives honored God. Your life doesn't honor God when you're trying to build a ministry. Wow. Let me finish it. Then he goes on to say, there will be a special treatment when I go into action. Yeah. There is a new endowment of empowerment that is about to come. Yeah. And I, I, I personally, I'm convicted. I'm going to switch from just calling it the remnant, and I'm going to start calling it the vanguard. Amen. The vanguard is, and, and can I just tell you, there could be possibly that some of you in this room don't have the grace. Mm -hmm. They mean you're lesser. Doesn't right. mean you're not important. Doesn't mean you're not significant. Right. It, it doesn't mean that every, not everybody can make it as a Navy SEAL. I, <coughs> I've got a couple of my buddies. I, I've got one guy, he's with the Lord now, Bobby Fisher. Grew up with, he was a Green Beret. He had four tours. Mm -hmm. He was a Green Beret. was put in a body pack. Zipped up. Pronounced dead. His little mother, little bad slave that I grew up with, had a dream. She dreamed they were burying her son. But you don't know the casket. And he wasn't dead. And he was discovered in this body back room. So I'm, I'm close to, closer to the Green Parade than I am the Navy Seals. I kind of know. I, I actually had three in my life that I grew up with that became Green Parade. Yeah. So I close the same day. I believe God wants to drive a ruling spirit in the Leviathan right here. Amen. I believe there's, I'm going to say this, I believe this is very significant to the nation, not just to Florida, to the nation. I believe there's a couple, there's some other places uh, that I believe are very, very significant in the nation. I'm going to go into that. But here's what I want to close with saying. Let's set our heart that we would meet like this. That our meetings and our discussion and the things we talk about are going to be significant. Enough. God comes and takes many minutes of what we're talking about. Yeah. If you're reading that, it, it talks about a book of remembrance. Let me just tell you, this weekend, God listened to me. Yeah. I know Amen. that by the Spirit. And so, I believe it's time for a new release of the angel harvest to come. Amen. Amen. Visit with 
this, and I apologize for that, but just kind of the way it is today. Mm -hmm. So don't be offended if we can sort of look at you and say, sorry, don't have time to shoot on that. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, let's get done what the Lord wants to get done here. Amen. 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 And I've heard four things since I've been here this morning that I'll uh, teach on for a few minutes and then we'll see what the Lord wants to do from that point. <coughs> I heard it first say I'm hovering. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this will be, the teaching part will be uh, obviously a review for some of you that have a good teaching on prayer. Maybe these things are covered in my book or on the intercessory prayer. But we're going to, we, I want, what Holy Spirit was doing was applying it to now. You know? Yeah. So, he said, I'm hovering. And that word comes from Genesis 1. You know? mm -hmm. He says, uh, the Holy, Holy Spirit, the Spirit was moving, King James says, moving over the face of the deep. You know? uh, some translations say hovering, some say brooding. But it's actually in the Hebrew word rakaf, which does mean brood is probably the best translation that I remember. It's a reproductive term. Right? Wow. And so that's why they call it hens, uh, offspring, it's brood, right? because it's that which the hen is reproduced. It is a, wow. physic, it is a picture of humans uh, in what we call the act of marriage. This is the word for it. So when a Hebrew scholar tells me, I didn't know that, because nobody really wants to talk about that. Well, that's what the word means, but that's what it means. We say, well, yeah, you're right, that's, and here's what it means. So it's not, you know, God's not trying to be weird with us. He's trying to say that when Jesus was decreeing, let there be, the power of the seed, his spoken words, were being taken by Holy Spirit and he was supplying the power and the life force to cause the words of Jesus to come forth. And in just the same same symbolic way in the New Testament it talks about his words being a seed. The word is sperma. <coughs> get the word spore from it. Get the word sperma from it. So he said, my words have life in my words, when they are decreed, release the hovering of the Holy Spirit, and He releases His power to bring forth. And I heard it not just for this place, I heard it for this region. I'm hovering now. You know, there's no point in there's no point in in making the decrees if you can't get the hover. He didn't say let there be until it says the Holy Spirit. That the spirit was brooding over the law. So it takes both. And so a lot of people make decrees, but there's no power of the Holy Spirit there to bring life to it. So you have to have both. And for him to say, I'm hovering now, lets me know that your decrees will go to a new level. Now you can say, Let there be. And the, and the that's really an important thing I just said. Yeah. Yes. And the uh, Greek word for a cough would be episkiato, which is overshadowing. It's the same concept of the hovering. One turn one likes concept to develop in a haze of brilliancy. Because of, so this Greek word involves not just the hovering over, but it involves light yeah. or glory. And so it's used three times in the New Testament, once at the transfiguration, when the glory came transfigured and actually glowed. The, 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 the literal Greek says when Jesus came off the mountain, the mountain that his clothing was flashing like lightning. He was glowing when he came off the mountain. And that's why people looked at him and said they were amazed when they saw it. Because, because of the glory. Yeah, you can still see it. It's also was uh, used at his conception because Mary said, how can I have a baby? I Married of a virgin, and, and the angel said, Well, Holy Spirit's going to come and overshadow you. That's one translation. Amen. You get a translation, He's going to come and just hover around you and envelop you in His power, right? The glory. And that which is conceived or born from you, conceived in you, born from you, is, will be of God. Right? Amen. And then, 
interestingly, it is also associated with the decree, because when the when the angel said, "For with God nothing shall be impossible," Amen. that's 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 a great promise, but it's not a it's not the best translation. Because what that verse literally says, and you can't get any more literal than this. For no word spoken by God is without power. Amen. No word spoken by God is without power. So the angel was saying, there, there are two things about to happen here. And it's the same two things that happened in Genesis 1. There's a word that's being spoken and there's a hovering that's taking place. And when, that, when those two things happen together, when the word of the Lord comes and the hovering of the Holy Spirit comes, something is born. Amen. Something is created. Something is conceived. Mm -hmm. The word is also used in, in Acts 5. It says that Peter tried to get Peter's shadow because he would think be evil. Right. But it really wasn't Peter's shadow healing anybody. What it really says there got in the Episcopalian when they stepped into the hover. So the Spirit of God was moving in such a way that the crowds were gathering and they had to move to the streets. And when they moved to the, you know, the throngs came, they said they would, they would get, try to get close and when they got in the Episcopalian. So in other words, you know, they'd give 10, 15, 20 feet from him and they stepped in to the glory or the hovering of the Holy Spirit that was operating out from him. So he brought been in a service where you could tell the whole room was filled with the power of God. The Holy Spirit was just hovering in the room. That's at the Skiazza. We're going to see more and more of that. We're going, to, we're going to see gatherings where we come in and everybody just knows nobody needs to do anything. We just need to sit here and worship or whatever. Yeah, because the Holy Spirit is just here hovering. Hallelujah. When he's hovering like that, people walk in and get saved. Yeah. Amen. They get saved in the parking lot. Yeah. I read any revival in history. Yeah. People, people would be saved or delivered just when they would get close That's to right. where it was. Right. Well, what was happening? Well, the hover was taking place. Yes, right. yeah. And he hovers over regions. Yeah. In Hebrides revival, they said, you know, one, one drunk, alcoholic, mean-spirited man who wanted nothing to do with it. He said, I tried my best to get away from the presence that was there. I went to every part of those islands trying to get away from it, and I couldn't get away from it. Wow. So I finally just gave up and got saved. Isn't that a strange testimony? <laughs> I didn't want to, but I couldn't help it. So this will drive me crazy, but, or I'm going to have to yield to it. Yeah. So, yeah. But he couldn't get away from the hover. Mm -hmm. And I heard Holy Spirit this morning say, I'm hovering. Oh, yeah. That means the prayers that have been prayed here have been effective. They've been doing Amen. something to create an atmospheric condition for the Lord. That's what that means. You don't, you, don't, you don't need the whole army yet. You need the embassy. You need the, yes. you need the uh, vanguard. Mm -hmm. That's what's been happening. There's been, a, a, there's been a group of people that have been cooperating with the Lord that have now, that, that, and what they've been doing has created an atmospheric condition mm -hmm. that is allowed the Holy Spirit to hover. Mm -hmm. So you've come to a fullness of time. Mm -hmm. Come to a fullness of time. Mm -hmm. Jesus was born at the fullness of time. You've come to a plural, a fullness of time. That's when you make it through the Kairos and the Horeos and you can now give birth to something. Yeah. Yeah. That's what that means. So I'm hovering, he says. And the hovering, uh, he, he brings the breath, but I'm not going to go there right now. The wind, the breath. The second thing I heard him say was, I've been, I've been lighting. that language to me is because of the studies I've done in the intercession. God sometimes will do that with me. He'll use unique language, but he knows what I'll hear in that language because of what I've studied. Yeah. And the word Hagah, the intercession, uh, is translated sometimes to the light form or land on or 
fall sometimes even happen in the fall. Because, because the connotation in Hebrew is sometimes that it happens by chance. Hmm. So when Jacob came to Bethel, uh, most most translations say he came to a place because the sun was setting, he spent the night there. But actually God was leading him to that place because it's where God had met with his grandfather Abraham. Mm -hmm. And the Hebrew doesn't say he came to a place, it says he came to the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It didn't make sense to the translators, so they didn't translate that way, but they should have because God knew what to say. Mm -hmm. He said he came to the place. Uh -huh. Because the sun was setting, in other words, Jacob was not being led by his own intellect. I want to get to this spot. Yeah. No, it was just chance to him. It was the place to go. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't mean much to him. Probably nothing. But to God it did. Because it was the place of covenant. It was the place of a previous visitation. It was the place of a previous it was the place of a previous mm -hmm. visitation. Amen. Wow. He came to the place and he grabbed a, a, a rock and some translations say he used it for a pillow but probably a better translation is he put it by his head. And he probably wasn't using a stone for a pillow. He probably had it there for protection. Amen. Mm. I believe, and I've read other scholars that believe this, those are not just my opinions. It's well thought out by theologians. That what he really grabbed without knowing it was a piece of the altar that Abraham had built decades. sleeping next to the covenant yeah. Yeah. and an altar of visitation yeah. and the same covenant promises that came to Abraham came to him in the dream because the dream was sitting right next to his head yeah. I didn't really think, I don't think all this three or four get up here, I just have these statements, you know. There's something so significant about the place where God had visited before and that he took a piece of the altar there that was there and set it right here. That's what you've been doing. You came right here because of the significance of this place. And you've been sleeping next to the covenant promise of visitation. Wow. Now, the phrase he came upon or he lighted upon or he chanced upon or translation said or he happened upon this place is the Hebrew word pagah, which is intercession. That's the picture of intercession. Our prayers, we don't, and we don't even sometimes know how it's happening and we pray the spirit of what we're praying about but he says your prayers will light upon or man upon the right place at the right time in the right way and Romans 8 talks about this says we don't know how to pray as we should should authors die it's an important Greek word it doesn't mean uh, it's not it's not a it's a weighty word, that's what I'm trying to say. It's a legal term. You know, what is necessary, right, or proper in the nature of a legal case. We don't always know what needs to happen. But when we pray in the Spirit, he says, I'll take your prayers and I'll pog out with them. I'll make sure that you're right on the right place. Right. And what is chance to you yeah. is not chance to Holy Spirit. God yeah. calls it to light on. So let's picture this as a butterfly. Because you've seen a butterfly, and it looks like you didn't have the slightest idea where he's going. <laughs> but he knows exactly where he's going. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's what it's like when you pray in the Spirit. You know, where you're going. You're just fluttering around in tongues and praying as you live. And you feel like, I hope I get the mark here. But what it's chance to you, you know, yeah. or is being directed by the Holy Spirit. Uh -huh. And he will light it all in the right place. Yeah. The right time. And the reason I think he's brought that to me. I have talked about that in a long time. Probably too long. Because that's what's been happening with your prayers. And your decrees. And you don't have to pray perfectly. Mm -hmm. You just have to have a perfect heart. And that doesn't mean without that doesn't mean flawless perfection. It means a whole lot. You know, your heart is totally given to Him. So if you don't have to say it just right, you just have to, you just have to have the right intention. And He takes it and He causes it to lie up on the right place. And when that happens, Jacob said, So when we do this, it opens gates. There's a gate there that hadn't been used for <coughs> decades, but it was still there. And the Haggad lighting upon the right place, allowing the Holy Spirit to hover through that, opens the gates. This is a gate that's been closed. Say, but this is what I'm by giving me this message. You have opened this age again. I don't know if you just felt what I said. Yeah. 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 When yeah. I said that, yeah. when I just said you have opened the age again, yeah. did you feel what yeah. I felt? Yes. Yeah. Yeah.
and say, I've been taking hold with you. In Romans 8, he says, we don't know how to pray as we should. We said, we light upon by chance, but it's not chance to us or to him. It just is to us. When we don't know how to pray as we should, we don't know what's right, necessary. helps us. That's a strange uh, it's a strange translation. He helps us. And it's a, 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 a long Greek word that is sunantimabama. And labama means take hold of and anti means against. And soon means together. Yeah. So it really means take hold of together with the kings. You will take hold with us against things. So as you've been praying, he's been he's been taking hold with you Amen. of the situation. Amen. Choking the life out of the He's he's had the handle of the spirit. It's a good thing he has a hold of it. Yeah. Because it's really his power we need. Yeah. It's his ability we need. We have to take hold of it with him. But not going to be a whole lot happen if he didn't take hold with us. Right. So he says, I'll take hold with you. meditating a little bit on this ruling sphere. Gerald. The ruling spirit, the ruling sphere aircraft carrier has brought you to a place of air superiority. I feel like God is saying that come in they'll devour so they, they're very territorial but God says this spirit has no choice but to eat the spirit 
Hallelujah. Yeah. He was said, You brought sign and tell me you are. So I know there's stuff stirring in you. <laughs> <laughs> just heard the Lord say, Now that Leviathan is dying, I'm about to come and visit for in the cool of the day. John 3 8, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Wow. Wow. And destroy is Lua. This is what Jesus said that the Ecclesia would do in Matthew 16. It's the word loose. So I'm trying to say untie. But it's really a, a legal term first. It's not a physical untying first. It is a word that means to dissolve a contract or something that legally binds. So it's the opposite of bind, which is also legal. But it's it's like a legal binding. This luo is the opposite. Dissolve something that legally binds or holds. It also became a word for physical binding, a loosing dissolving something like dissolve with heat or the ship in the book of Acts that Paul was on that got stuck in the reef during the storm and it beat it to pieces that's Luo 
elements melting with fervent heat in Peter's epistle, that's a little bit. So it is a physical thing, but it originates, the word does, from a legal concept of breaking a legal hold. So Jesus came, wouldn't have done any, Jesus didn't just come to beat up the devil. All right. yeah. Yeah. That's right. Jesus right. came to break his yeah. legal yeah. hold yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. people. Yeah. He broke his, when, it, when Genesis 3.15 says, I'm going to crush his head, yeah. it it's rosh, it's, it's headship. Mm. The word means the head of something. It's not so much a physical head as it is the head of the planet mm. or the headship of the church or whatever. So it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a position. Mm. So first John three eight says, I came I came to break the headship, the leap of hope that the enemy had. Something came into this place and gave Satan a legal hold. Mm -hmm. Could be in, I don't know, sin, compromise, covenant breaking. I don't know what it was. Shedding innocent blood. I don't know what it was. Maybe you do. I don't feel like we need to know what it was today. Maybe somebody has backed it and needed to know, but I don't feel like we need to know. But I'm just telling you, something happened in, in history that gave place to the devil. That's right. Amen. When he says, give no place to the devil, that's tobots. Yeah. That's the literal word for land, topography we get from it. Yeah. So when he says, give no place to him, he's saying, don't give him any legal right to rule a territory. Yeah. Right. That's right. Right. Amen. Whether that's in your mind or whether that's a region. Yeah. But he has had a territorial hold. And God says, I'm coming now to meet with you. And I'm going to enforce. I'm going to do for this region and for this place right here what 1 John 3 8 says that I did legally for the whole planet. Now I can apply it right here. Yes. I can bring specific application of that right here. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm going to meet with you and I'm going to meet with this region. That's what I heard. Thank you for what you have done through this ecclesia and others as well around the state. Those come in and out and help and we'll never be arrogant enough to imply that it's just us. Amen. But thank you for what you've been doing for Florida and the nation to get rid of this serpent float up through the state and right up through Jacksonville. The Bible, Python that strangles the life out, that tears and destroys and consumes. Thank you for telling us that you have taken hold of the spear with us and yeah. rammed it down the throat of
suck the air out of the atmosphere spiritually. I don't know. Okay. That's, that's what I hear. Yeah. It's created an atmospheric condition that does not allow the hovering. That you, the actions of men and demons have said to you, you're not welcome here, but a remnant came on the scene and, and has said, but you are welcome. Yes. And has repented for the sins and has revisited the altar, Hallelujah. revisited the stone, yeah. and found the place. And you have taken those prayers and caused them to light upon the right situation in the right way. And you're going to deal now with this spirit. And we decree over. Leviathan over this python spirit that has ruled this part of the country. Yeah. We decree over that spirit that Jesus has taken from you your hold and your right to rule. Yes. That the ancient of days has made a decree and that decree is he is now hovering. The Ancient of Days says, I am now hovering and my seed is in the, is in the atmosphere yeah, of this region. Yeah. And I'm going to release my power to cause it to bring forth life. And I heard this yesterday and I'm hearing it again today. And I don't even know what to do with it other than just to say it. I believe there's a sign coming to Florida that somebody's going to come. God's going to give somebody a very super supernatural. Won't be seen as that necessarily by people. But there is a there is a an answer coming to the python infestation in Florida. Amen. There is an answer coming. Somebody's going to be given an idea that's right. going to eradicate this stuff. Amen. And it's going to be a sign to this region yes. that this python spirit is broken off of us. Hallelujah. 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 I have no idea what that looks like. There's a plan, there's a strategy, there's a weapon, there's something coming. It, it, it may be supernatural. God just may deal with it. I don't know. There's something coming to eradicate this problem. And it's a sign. So now, Lord, we just decree, along with the dream, that air superiority is now right here yeah. in this fort. Yes. Air superiority is here. Hallelujah. And it's not leaving until Dr. Don Lynch says he's finished.
the sons and daughters of one whole nation. Apostolic Center, it's Kingdom Center. I pray over them strength and refreshing and heightened awareness and spiritual. <coughs> I pray over them now, Lord, that <coughs> Jacob has been to Bethel and found the covenant. sons can now come forth. And the nation can come forth. You know, Lord, that which has been promised can come forth. And so the multiplication can now occur. The multiplying of the basis, the multiplying, the fulfillment of the vision. the release of the provision. find the covenant, once you find the rock, once you find the place, then you can go get provision for the nation. That's what's happening. That's the next phase. say something I don't even need to say because people love it and I think you know it but I won't say it there are people that have said you're just too intense and you're too harsh and they can't put up with that they're just their personality and their their mentality Lord says, 
I didn't need a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a bad guy. I needed a general. Amen. Yes. Deal with the spirit. Amen. I needed somebody that had a strength that went all the way from the top of the head to the tip of the toe. Amen. I needed a special forces commander. Not someone to lead 100,000 general soldier. I needed somebody that would go to the mouth of the serpent yes. and have enough fortitude and strength to stay there yeah. until the job was done. Yeah. Yeah. And so the Lord just says to you, Concentration of them, then they're going to be able to go in and do it. 
So, Father, I just come in agreement for this group of people, this area of Florida, for Don and Ruth Ann Lynch. And, Father, everything you put in their heart, we call it in. We declare heaven is open. And you're pouring out blessing they cannot hold. We call in. Father, we just call in. I prophesied a very interesting word a year ago to the end time handmaiden that they were going to come into a place to where they had three years budget in the account at all times. Wow. And uh, I, I just, I want to, I, I just, I have faith in my heart. I want to declare that over y'all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. It's just right now. So we declare on the two of you that you're coming in. To an abundance. Yeah, in fact, I, I declare for you, you're coming in to where you're not going to just build and move out of the supply of God. You're going to build and move out of the overflow. Hallelujah. I declare a three years budget. And I know the budget is never increasing, but it's going to be like the widow of the oil. I declare that. Yeah. If, if your vision uh, increases and your your understanding of the vision increases, that there's going to be an increase of the supply of God so that it is it, it, the overflow is what you will minister out of. Father, just lift up this burden from them today. And we call them into that place of provision. And we declare. We declare. Hallelujah. Just a plain word, I just heard the Lord say, what has been a ford here at this part of the river will now become you can't yesterday and I'm just going to issue an admonishment. Somebody here needs to step up and get the recording of this and transcribe these words. These words need to be put out on Facebook work. Uh, we're working on a website in Arkansas, also Mississippi, to where every prophetic word we get our hands on that we feel is valuable can be put out there so that intercessors can tap into them and go with it. And let me just tell you, I know I did a lot of prophesying, but it's not about who prophesied. Right, right. It's about what God said. It's yes. the last few days. And it needs to be laid in the hands of Kim along. It needs to be laid in the hands of other people so they can war with yes. them. Yes. And so I'm issuing a challenge that somebody here 
that can transcribe. That's not an easy thing uh, with it, but you can step up. This needs to be done ASAP so they can be gotten out there. And so you need to step up and, uh, to Dr. Don. He'll get you a copy of it and get these things transcribed. You know, I've got someone that transcribed everything we're going back through. We're trying to put together a whole book on a, a, a syllabus, I don't know how to say, but a manual on the Arkansas Trail of Hope, every prophetic word. So that with it, God didn't just, he doesn't just speak so he can say, it's good. He gives us weapons. Hallelujah. Amen. That's not for the scrapbook. We don't have a prophetic scrapbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have something to do with this. 12 11, they stand, as God said at 12 12. We were to come into agreement with what he has spoken to us. And we are coming into 12 12 now. I'm asking for you to respond appropriately. Raise your hands and respond to God appropriately to what you have received today. I know things were said, some of it was personal, right? and we receive it. But you know that this message speaks into your life, it speaks into your destiny. We need to appropriately respond because it will. Cause us to change our life and our lifestyles. Come on, it's 12. Go ahead. Yes. Yes.
conference. Thank you all for all that you did. My wife, who does so much that nobody sees. You don't ask to do that. <laughs> Even I don't see all that she does. Yeah. And all of you who contributed for a successful uh, conference in many, many ways. <clears throat> really appreciate that very much. You represent God well. And this is a culminating day, so it's very difficult, you know, to really talk about everything mm -hmm. that's happening here in one, in one moment. But uh, let's just uh, receive our tithe and offering. Thank you for your continued and consistent faith in this international mission, your, uh, your support for nations, for what's happening in Brazil. Have a team going soon, as you know, uh, to Brazil. Company profits, of course, will be represented at a, uh, the national, <laughs> national conference in Brazilia. Uh, on profits functioning in company as part of our continuing the tour de prophetic and nation. This will be like our 12th, wow, this is our 12th tour de prophetic conference there. There's been clearly tens of thousands of people who've been touched by them. <clears throat> and uh, Extremely important times in that nation as well. And we expect to uh, represent the assignment there very strongly. And that will be happening sometime. I don't know when I'm leaving. When I'm leaving first, or they go by my yeah, But I'll be here next Sunday, Amen. August the 6th. And uh, so, so let's receive tithe and offering right now. Have we already done that? Are we doing it? Are we processed? Or Father, I bless your people. We're giving you on a consistent basis in covenant with you. Tithe and offerings giving to you the first fruits, the seed sowing, the sacrificial release of goods, of money, of things that the uh, Lord are causing your kingdom to reach its purposes. Bless them, going out, coming in, sitting down, rising up, breakthroughs on the job, improvements in income, new sources of income, oh, yeah. those who live by, the, <clears throat> by making sales, that there are closing, closed deals, Amen. closings are happening. <laughs> those that are building uh, businesses, that they will flourish with new sources of income, new uh, open doors of expansion. Those, uh, Lord, all inheritances fully released into your people's hands in this season of the transfer of wealth. Let there be blessing upon the houses of the people of God during this time we declare in Jesus' name. You receive that blessing. Amen. 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 And, uh, okay, let's just continue with that. Today marks uh, a really important time. I'm working uh, toward our understanding of our next step. Um, of course, we've been here uh, on purpose, and we will finish this assignment, let me assure you. But during the process, we, uh, <clears throat> we are, of course, anticipating our next, our next step. And uh, as you know, we've been uh, looking 